Hello there and welcome to this video on conversations on consciousness. My name's Ladrin and today I'm going to be speaking about guys hair. Or women's hair, doesn't matter. This might be appropriate to anybody. Um, even dogs. <laughs> Who knows. But hair, the manly mane on our heads. Um, so I just want to talk to you about, you know, hair care, how, how I do things. And things I've learned about health, nutrition, patience, all sorts of things. So, as men, we aren't taught things at a young age about hair itself. Women uh, naturally learn things through mothers, uh, you know, grandparents, uh, grandmothers, um, female friends, I'm, I guess, about things that they should and shouldn't do to hair and also hair nutrition and everything. So I'm gonna break it down into things that I do in my routines and things I avoid doing and etc. So, okay, first things first is that hair, growing hair, the very first stage of growing hair. If you're a guy, most likely you have short hair or you're looking to grow long hair, you've had long hair in the past and then you think about the, the time it takes to grow it compared to it being cut off instantly and yeah we all hate having our hair cut at some point uh, if we've had it long and then we miss it straight away once it's being cut and for whatever reason that you've cut your hair is entirely a personal reason to you either you thought that oh you're fed up of having to sort your hair out or you've done it for a job or you've done it for a relationship or to impress somebody or impress yourself or it's been for work or acting there's many different reasons why. I mean, there could be accidents as well and you have to literally just cut your hair or it could be for illness and you're trying to grow your hair back. So as a guy, you know, I wasn't taught with that about things when I was younger about hair. I just remember being much younger and my mum washing my hair like once a week or every five days. And, you know, I had not longish hair, but it was, you know, a few inches long. And... I remember my, my mum washing my hair and it was fine. And as I got older and then, you know, growing my hair, I noticed that, well, after having short hair for so many years, I'd wash my hair every day or in the shower, getting it wet and washing it. And so I didn't know about all these different sciences or the, you know, down to the cellular structure of hair and what happens. So basically, grease, grease and oil is a big problem for some people and also the other side which is dry hair. So for me I get quite oily greasy hair quite fast after after a few days but you can train yourself to do that and that's exactly what i done because for example you know if I'm going out somewhere on the weekend uh, like London or somewhere traveling and you know I want to look okay I don't look like I'm a homeless person. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, greasy, oily hair. Like, after just one day of washing my hair, my hair started to get really oily. So, um, this is like day two or three, I can't remember now, of, you know, my hair being washed. And, you know, like, how I've trained it myself is by patience. And on my days off, I'm not seeing anybody else going out, and I just, I know I need a hair wash. I leave it a that, that bit longer. I did that for two or three months, uh, especially the lockdown here in, in England really helped because there were times when I didn't see anybody for, you know, quite a few months. So I trained my hair in a way that um, when I was going out and working and stuff, my hair was okay, you know, it was, it was bearable. But when I had like days off to myself, I would not wash it. And the reason was you reason is you're probably thinking uh he didn't wash his hair I was like well it's okay it's normal to go out a week without washing your hair or four or five days you know but me the day after it would be greasy or oily and it would be just you know a state two days after it'd be horrible so I actually trained my hair to become less oily and the reason for that is when you wash your hair you strip the hair from its natural oils and so your hair has to compensate and produce more sebum which is the oil of your hair it's not dirty it just might seem like that or unclean when in fact it's actually trying to clean itself so the things I did was tying it up which was really helpful so it's not feeling yucky in your face 
And um, also another thing I used was uh, aloe vera gel. <laughs> um, you know, that was more liquidy. And I mixed it with a little bit of salt. And what that do did, did it, what it did, <laughs> excuse me, um, what it did was able to soak up any of the moisture and not dry my hair out, my scalp at the same time. Now in the past, I'd use it in an emergency thing like powder, like um, from the shop called Lush. And they have this dry shampoo. Dry shampoos are terrible because they will dry out your scalp. The powder will seep into your scalp and make your scalp drier and actually do the opposite of you trying to get normal hair without it being greasy. So um, I use a mixture like talcum powder and the, the Lush and it was working fine on the day. I would sprinkle it on, use a towel and I'm like, hey, it's a good fixer. Very fast fixer straight away. However, I found that using aloe vera gel, liquid gel, uh, by Seven Minerals, minerals that was the brand I used, a bottle, and I put in like a heat tablespoon of salt in there, I think it was, or tea, a teaspoon, I can't remember how much it was. I intuitively put it in, mixed it around, and then, you know, every few days after having a hair wash when it's starting to get more greasy, I would put this on, and after a few hours of it, drying because it was it goes on wet it would absorb all the grease and it my hair would look okay and that was helping me get through a longer stage without washing it and now I can go for four days opposed to two days without washing like needing it to be washed because it's greasy so now my scalp my the sebum of my scalp isn't producing so much oil natural oils so now I'm really, you know, feeling a lot more confident in my in my hair journey, which is great. Um, so now I wash it maybe every four or five days, depending on when I need to, which I feel much more comfortable about, which means I can travel. Well, I can't at the moment because of the coronavirus and etc. However, if I am to travel, then I feel okay. If I was to get on a plane and, and go to the other side of the world, Central America, for example, you know, Mexico... If I was to go that way, I know that when I come off the plane, I'm not going to look like, you know, I haven't had a wash for over a week. So I'll look okay, you know, I'll be, you know, um, presentable. Um, it just saves time as well, you know, not washing your hair so much. And it's like, you don't need to either. And that comes to another um, thing of my routine is like washing hair. So um, the worst thing to do is again, producing too much oils and stuff, is to lather up your hair too much. And if you get to know your hair, have a relationship with it, that if you're putting shampoo on and you're lathering it up with water and you're hearing it squeak, like squeaky clean, that is a really bad idea. So basically what's going to happen is your hair's going to, you know, your scalp is going to produce more sebum, make it more oily, and you don't need to wash your hair too much. So I use, you know, a small palmful amount of, of shampoo and I put it everywhere and I just do this for a bit and then not under the water because with water it seems to strip it completely of, of its natural oils and you don't want that. So I put it on once uh, my hair is wet, uh, the, the shampoo, put it everywhere and then without my head under the, sh under the water I just, you know, put it everywhere, lather it up and then without scrubbing I put my head, head under the water and then let all the, the soap just run off and that's the best way and I don't feel any squeaky cleaning cleanliness like of my hair <laughs> and then after I put a bit of conditioner on the roots only like just on the ends and that just helps to just nourish and keep it hydrated and not have dry brittle hair basically and that's what I do um, for the drying stage I let it air dry as best as po possible uh, in England at the moment, in, in the winter, it's a bit cold, so inside I plan when I have the, the fire on, my fireplace in my home, or I have a gas heater, and just be, be close enough to it where it's been a bit more air dried. In the summertime, it's easier, I can just leave the house and it will be dry after a while. Um, for me, um, combing, I mean, when it's wet, do not comb your hair. When it's wet, it's more fragile, it's more prone to breakage. So you've just got to be very, very careful about, you know, the, your hair and like it's, it's the clothes of your body, you know. It's like you want to make it last longer and, and, and to protect it as well. So 
nutrition and um, you know nutrition for, for the hair so the best thing really is is water so drinking enough water hydration your hair is made of ke keratin uh, you know and and protein as well so you need not a high protein diet but you need good amino acids and minerals for your hair but hydration is the key if you're listen, looking to grow your hair faster um, things that have helped me was uh, collagen you know plant-based collagen and biotin um, and like I think like 30,000 milligrams a day that helped to speed up my hair growth much faster and water so if you're looking to grow your hair faster and you're going for a, a really awkward stage and you know just like you regret cutting your hair or having a trim and you want to grow your hair faster I found like 30 30,000 milligrams of uh, biotin spread out through the day so 10,000 in the morning 10 in the lunchtime and you you get the idea every three or four hours um, just supplementing and um, yeah just taking really good care of your hair by not brushing it too much um, and like also tying it up too much I find that I don't have them with me but I've got different glasses like sunglasses and stuff I find that if just getting it out of my face just put them up and it's like a hairband and it's not it's a bit discreet, you know, it just keeps the hair out of your face if you're like washing up or making food or doing other things where your hair is just constantly in your face. I just find that quite annoying. So try not to tie my hair up too much, which can also break your hair, damage it. And if you do tie it, make sure it's a bit light. It's not too, uh, like, tight, tightly done up. Um, so, yeah, with regards to um, heat as well, if you're washing your hair, make sure that you, you know, you're not having really hot water over your head. That's really bad. It can damage the hair. Same as hair dryers, uh, straightening irons, um, and also like things like bleaching and dyeing. Just try and stay away from dyeing your hair. Be comfortable in your own body. Be comfortable in your own skin. If you feel like you want to you know, dye your hair, fine. But the word dye, D-Y-E, sounds pretty much the same as dyes in D-I-E. It's pretty much the same. You're killing the color of your hair. And the color of your hair is the outer shell of the keratin strands of your hair, basically the shaft, which is, it's that color for a reason. And, you know, you want to make your hair as strong as possible, as sleek and as comfortable as possible without any problems. Um, I've seen people on um, long hair groups when they've, uh, done keratin treatments or permanent straightening and I've seen people's hair damaged bleach is the worst people want this like bleach blonde um, colored hair women and men and it's like it's the worst thing to do your hair you're literally killing it from being very dark to, to something very light so try and avoid dyeing your hair killing your hair the less you do to your hair it's actually the better and that's what I've learned, is that for years in the past, I've cut my hair off a number of times for a number of reasons, and I've regretted it every time. And the time when I've been growing it, and it's been long, and I've maintained it, I've done things to my hair, which, you know, all sorts of things, to try and be at its best. And the best way is really just doing less to it. The less you do to your hair, the actually better quality it is. So if you suffer in any type of hair at all like if it's very dry if it's there are treatments you can do but try and do the less to it because putting a lot of oil in your hair and I uh, find even like um, henna henna hair treatments although they're that's a more of a natural approach to um, to um, you know dyeing your hair using natural plant proteins and you know dyes and stuff that that is a much better for your hair the quality of it however when you're putting it in it can be very dense and it can get quite stuck and when you're combing it out it can just pull pull more of your hair out so um, to avoid that just don't do it you know or get more of a liquid um, type based henna or dye a one that's not gonna you know not gonna hurt your hair completely you know, try and be comfortable in your own skin, like, you know, be be okay, be happy, you know, if you have a natural wave in your hair, you know, be okay with it, or use less straightening, if you like straight hair, 
okay, strain it once a week and don't just don't strain it every day. You know, if you feel like you have to look a certain way, be comfortable in your own skin, you know, embody the hair the way it is. It's, it's yours to wear. And of course, if you're not happy, then okay, do something about it. But just be aware of the damage that you are doing to your hair itself. As, the hair, as your hair gets longer, my hair gets longer, there are other challenges that come in the way, you know, like it getting, getting in the mouth, um, it being longer and getting trapped in car doors and <laughs> other things. You just have to be a bit more aware. The worst thing is putting a backpack on and then like it, your hair getting caught. So it's just, it's just like another limb that you have to be aware of that's part of your body. And that's okay. It's just being aware of it. Wind is, is sometimes an issue, you know, just, just if the wind's blowing a certain way, you just cannot get rid of it. So always having an emergency hair ties, but the best hair ties are really like clamps. They don't damage your hair, they just keep your hair up in a certain way, and you feel more comfortable that way. For me, the reason why I have long hair is, personally, I don't know, I just feel like a number of reasons is that it's less actually to deal with. Having short hair, I have to get it cut more often, have to style it, um, and I never liked my hair when it was short. It would just felt just not right. I felt like a part of me was missing. And also, spiritually speaking, I believe that hair is the extension of our, of our nervous system. That, you know, if we're not meant to have long hair, then we wouldn't be able to grow it, you know, as men. And it's just a part of me, you know. I think I look a bit better, with longer hair, that's that's my personal preference. It's not for everybody. Some people might disagree, but this is the style that I wear it. Sometimes I rock a bit of a beard <laughs> going on. Same reason. It's just having to shave every day. It's not like I'm not looking after myself. It's just like, well, if I can grow it, then I can. And if it just takes me less time to do, you know. So it's like I don't want to be spending a lot of time every day sorting my hair out and having to tidy up. It's just one less thing I can do when I can be doing something else. And probably the same if I had decided to cut my hair completely off and be bald. I've heard the um, people, people say that before. People who are voluntarily bald, like, you know, shaving their hair off completely. It's just something less to do. And it's the same really when you have long hair. The only issue is, is just washing it. And then that's it. Me combing it, I don't know, my, my hair doesn't seem to get quite knotty. Like I can run my fingers through and I have no problem. Um, maybe I'm lucky in that sense, I don't know. But I try not to comb my hair so much. For a number of reasons is that I don't think it needs it. Like I might comb it once a day, like if it's, if it's much longer. Um, but it doesn't get knotty. And if it's getting knotty, that means it's quite dry and it can... Um, you know, create more knots and almost like dreads and, you know, tiny dreads in there. So there are things that you can do, which is treatments, which is oil treatments. Um, however, if you have greasy, oily hair, try and stay away from these oil treatments because it's only going to do yourself more damage. Um, I've actually found that one good um, hair treatment, which I succeeded in in the summer, was using um, citrus peel. So the peel of like grapefruit, lemons, which just smell lovely, grapefruit, um, oranges, and then using rose petals. Now rose petals are amazing. So what I did was that I did different experiments of like rice experiments with like uh, uh, white rice. The best is like Thai sticky rice, I believe, but try and get something organic. And I washed it and washed it so I had like rice water. And then with that, I um, I added rose petals and or like grapefruit peel and then added lots of like spring water on top. And what I did is that after my wash, I use that as a conditioner to put over and tell you that the, the silky and smoothness of the, the rice and the rose petals um, just made my hair feel, I don't know, just very n nourished and it was a natural product that I harvested from the garden or the supermarket and it didn't cost me anything. It was very, very cheap. At the moment, winter time, there's no roses that come out. Excuse me. Um, although I brought two rose plants, you know, that I know will last for, for many years and they have some really nice roses. 
And if you're wondering what roses to get, you can try with other flowers, I'm sure, but the ones that have the most perfume to it are the best because they have like the, the good oils and the natural oils and stuff. So what I did, I, I made rice uh, water. So like basically cleaned the rice as much as I can with my fingers. And it didn't, it didn't take long. I mean, I was watching something on YouTube while I was doing this and or listening to something at the time or speaking to a friend. And then I added uh, uh, rose rose petals and then I just let it sit for a couple of days. And then I prepared that and then I put that, I sieved it out. So basically I got rid of all the big particles and it was just the water. And I tell you, it felt made my hair feel really nice and smooth and healthy. And it was like a, a miracle, like an ingredient. And I've heard that the, mo the, the women with the most longest hair in the world are the, the Yao women of China, I think I've pronounced that right, um, where they would use fermented rice water and wash their hair only with that all the time. And they had the world's like longest, healthy, strongest hair. For whatever reason, I don't know. I mean, I tried it. I gave the idea to a few friends. Some of them were failed experiments because they left it too long. Again, if you live in a hot country and you're doing the rice experiment, uh, sorry, the rice water, um, the rice water and rose petals and stuff, and if you leave it somewhere in a hot environment, it's going to ferment and re smell really bad and almost go green and fluffy. So try to avoid that. Keep it in a cool, dry place away from sunlight and you're not going to have a problem. Me in England here, I didn't have any issues. I could leave it three or four days make a big batch and it used to last me a while. Um, I did try other ways of like uh, making like a rose petal tea um, and then mixing it with more cold water and then at the end of my my shampooing basically cleaning my hair I put I put this over and it, it really did change the quality of my hair and I left that in and that's the thing if you put this on your hair um, don't rinse it out just leave it in your hair and it's not a problem to leave it in your hair. It's not going to smell. You just naturally dry. It might take just a slight bit longer because of the natural oils in there from the rose petals and the, uh, the citrus peel. But yeah, the things that I learned on the internet researching this for quite a few months, I found that that was the best thing that I found online. And I tried them. I tried different things. I tried um, oil treatments. I tried just coconut oil. It just... I had to keep washing and washing my hair, the oil didn't come out. It just like, and I felt that actually these oil treatments, um, like uh, avocado oil, all these other different oils just made my hair worse <laughs> because it just made, me, made it more oily and I couldn't get the oil out and everything. Um, I tried many things like uh, silk um, pillow ca cases. I found that it wasn't so great because it was so silky that um, it was almost like being on some plastic in, in your in your bed. So now I use a just normal cotton uh, pillow case and that, I guess, absorbs a bit more of the oil or grease that's in my hair if it is there um, or dirt from the day. And then I wash my pillow case every couple of day you know couple of days I get a new one so I have a supply that's the thing to to think about when you're in your bed uh, like you know the rest of your body isn't dirty because you've had a shower of you know, you're clean when you get into your bed or wear just pajamas you know unless you're getting very hot for me it was just like my pillowcase that I felt was a not I'm not saying my pillowcase got very greasy or oily I was just aware that in order to keep my hair more clean that it's best if I change the pillowcase you know weekly at least which I think I did weekly not every two or three days <laughs> over exaggerating um, so yeah it comes to <clears throat> also the the awkward stage as a guy of growing hair you know how do you get over that um, it depends on your job as well um, it's just getting through the awkward stage and the only thing that can help you at this time if you're growing your hair is patience Patience is the key. To be honest, you're going to get there. And it's going to be many months. And then you're going to look back and think, wow, yeah, my hair's grown a lot. But at the moment, it's going to seem like it's it's going to take forever. Because we live in a society now where everything is impulse buying. Everything is online. We It's, it's a quick fix straight away. You know, we want long hair now or, you know, everything. And it's just, we cannot... We don't have the patience, and patience is the key. Time is your best friend if you're growing hair, and that's the best thing you can do. 
So all the experiments that I've done, I've done banana treatments. I felt that's okay. I gave the uh, the recipe to a friend. Unfortunately, they didn't follow it properly, so they just stuck a whole banana on their head, and then the, the banana dried. So banana sort of worked okay. I've tried avocado masks and stuff, but to be honest, I found that the best one, as I said, for helping my hair externally, was rose water and and rice water, and it just gave some magic to my hair, and it was like smelled good, and yeah, opening up that. I, that jar, that glass jar, just smelled like heaven. I was like, wow, I'm putting this on my hair. Okay, I'm going to give it a go. <laughs> so there you go. There's some of the hair routines I do. At the moment, during uh, the winter time, I haven't done many hair treatments just because it's more colder outside and having to be with wet hair for, for many hours isn't so fun. So I usually do these in the summertime or if I'm in a climate that's a lot warmer. Um, so yeah, cutting hair, trimming hair, I encourage to trim your hair every three or four months or when it's needed to, just the ends, you know, just a little bit, you know, just, just a, just a tad, just to get rid of any split ends. Now you've probably heard of really bad nightmares of people going to hairdressers and going on, going, going there and they're saying, Hey, I just want to trim. And so they trim a lot and people are really upset. So if you just want to look after your hair without losing a lot, then do it yourself or, or a friend and just get like a small strand each time. I'd say like, I don't know, that much and just snip the ends and then hold, get that your friend or like a clamp to hold that and then work at the next piece and then work for your whole hair. That way you're getting rid of any split ends. You're sorting out all your hair. It takes a bit longer, but then you're not losing hair itself which is another thing I want to speak about, which is losing hair. So as your hair gets longer, you go through uh, a phase of hair where it's renewing itself and you're going to lose hair. So people think that they're bald, balding, they're going bald when they start to shed lots of hair daily. I mean, you lose between seven to a hundred hairs per day. So if you don't brush your hair or wash your hair in a week, and then you start brushing like after a shower or you've had a shower and then you notice in the plug hole that there's this like ball. <laughs> it's normal, especially as your hair gets longer. Think about it, that's seven or a hundred hairs that you're going to lose and you're going to see that. So people often think, oh my God, I'm losing hair, I'm going bored. It's natural, it's normal. It's, I mean, if you're losing quite a lot, like handfuls a day and you're seeing ball patches, then yeah, there's a problem. But it is normal to lose a lot of hair. Um, so yeah, hair care is something that we are not taught as we're younger and really growing hair is just patience. You know, dying hair, do not do, as I said, try and keep things natural and you're not going to have an issue. Um, so what else to talk about? I think I've pretty much covered everything about hair itself. Tying up, try not to keep it too tight. Um, these are the things that I do. Nutrition, keep yourself with, uh, a diet full up with you know good uh, vitamins and minerals um, biotin is quite a big uh, subject um, and vitamin so I found that yeah as I said like 10, 10 to uh, 30,000 30, uh, milligrams per day really speed up my hair growth and other things like uh, collagen you can probably find like a marine collagen um, but I had like plant-based collagen which is like building you know amino acids basically for your hair and that's you know your hair basically is the the dead proteins of your body it's the waste so basically your health is important so your hair is the the leftover of your body's like nutrition so whatever you eat you need to think about your body first for giving it for its circulation its health protein vitamins minerals and just feeding your body as much, new, you know, good nutrition, good vitamins, minerals. If you don't have a good um, uh, multi-mineral uh, supplement, then get it, regardless of how good your health is. You know, take one per day. Make sure you're getting, like, vitamin D3, plenty of iron, plenty of B12. Um, and just try different things. I take fulvic minerals, which is um, minerals that are found deep below the seabed that are compressed. It's very ancient, uh, very high in minerals and, and content. Um, 
Yeah, and, and protein as well. So whatever your hair grows from is, you know, from the nutrition that you've eaten. People that have, have really damaged thin thinning hair, uh, not always, but sometimes because of the background of like a, an illness that I've been through or malnutrition, and it shows in your hair. So hair is a reflection on your health. So that's it from me. I uh, hope you've enjoyed. Um, if you want to grow your hair, just do it. You know, it doesn't matter what other people think. It's whatever reason, you know, welcome to the long hair world and <laughs> enjoy it. You know, if you have any questions or comments, feel free, be yourself, be comfortable because like your hair is part of you and, you know, embody it, be grateful of it. It, you know, keeps you warm in the winter. It's, um, yeah, it, can, it protects you. It's, you can style it in different ways. Um, and it gives that extension to your personality and who you are, you know. And for me, spiritually, I see it as an antenna, you know. It's an extension of our nervous system, our etheric bodies. And for me, it's, I don't know, I feel more in tune and more comfortable with, you know, my long mane. Because that's part of who I am. My hair is part of me. So thank you for watching. Hope you've enjoyed, if you got this far. And... Um, if you want to know more on different subjects I cover, just check out my other videos. Otherwise, thank you for watching, and I'll speak to you next time. Goodbye.